If you've never built or upgraded a gaming PC before, things can get quite daunting once you start evaluating and comparing graphics cards. After all, graphics cards are a ton of specs that all sound super important. The good thing is, they aren't all that important. At least not for gaming. So it's better to focus on a couple of key specs and let the rest work itself out. And one of the most important graphics card specs is video memory. Most graphics cards in 2020 utilize GDDR memory, but not all of them have the same number affixed to them. There is GDDR5, GDDR6, GDDR6X, and that's why in today's video we'll be covering everything you need to know about GDDR memory when picking out a graphics card for a gaming PC. We'll start with the basics, and there's nothing more basic than understanding what the acronym GDDR stands for. This actually isn't even the full acronym. GDDR SDRAM stands for Graphics Double Data Rate Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory. It really is just a big mouthful, honestly. Thankfully, there's no need to memorize this. What's good to know is that unlike your standard DDDR SDRAM, GDDR SDRAM is designed and optimized specifically for graphics processing tasks. There have been several iterations of GDDR RAM over the years. Initially, this technology was called DDR SG RAM, which stood for Double Data Rate Synchronous Graphics RAM, but it was rebranded into GDDR SD RAM. What followed was GDDR2, GDDR3, GDDR4, GDDR5, GDDR5X, GDDR6, and finally, GDDR6X in this order. Needless to say, each iteration was better than the last, offering higher capacities, higher clock speeds, higher data transfer rates, and so on. In short, each new iteration of GDDR RAM brought new improvements to the overall graphics performance. So what type of GDDR RAM should you look for in a graphics card? Should you always get the best one, or is it okay to go with an older version? Here's the thing. Outside of a few very niche cases where a certain GPU was initially released with one type of GDDR memory and later revamped and sold with another, you don't really get to choose which GDDR RAM you get with which graphics card. In 2020, nearly all the latest graphics cards utilize GDDR6, with only a couple of high-end models like the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3090 featuring GDDR6X RAM with its higher bandwidth and greater power efficiency. It's been some time since GDDR5 was the dominant type of video memory on the market. At the moment, it can only be found in graphics cards from a few years ago and some entry-level solutions that aren't suited for gaming in 2020. So overall, it's not like you're given much of a choice. Unless you're buying a used graphics card, you're pretty much guaranteed to get one that's equipped with GDDR6 VRAM. If this is the case and you're looking to buy a used graphics card, we suggest checking out our video that covers everything you need to know when buying used graphics cards down in the description. And also looking up some benchmarks to see whether or not the graphics card in question holds up in games that you're interested in playing. So we've seen why you most likely won't get a say in deciding which version of GDDR you'll get with your graphics card. However, this doesn't mean you won't have to ask yourself some tough questions regarding VRAM. Namely, how much VRAM you actually need. In 2020, the question of VRAM is one that largely has to do with the resolution you're planning to game on. This isn't to say that there aren't other memory-intensive graphics settings out there, like textures and view distances, but the resolution is easily the biggest factor right now. As things stand, you'll need at least 4GB of VRAM for gaming in 1080p, anywhere between 6 and 8GB of VRAM for gaming in 1440p, and at least 8GB of VRAM for gaming in 4K, although you can never go wrong with more VRAM when 4K gaming is concerned. You should know that these are generalizations. There's more to getting good performance than just having plenty of VRAM. For example, the RX 570 GPU, which is a mid-range GPU released back in 2017, isn't fit for running games in 1440p, at least not on a high graphic settings with good frame rates. This is despite the fact that the RX 570 can come with 8GB of VRAM. Nevertheless, this is still a pretty good estimate that will hold for most graphics cards, especially newer ones. Lastly, we want to address the issue of using other types of VRAM instead of GDDR-SD RAM. HBM, which stands for High Bandwidth Memory, 
is another increasingly popular type of VRAM. In fact, it far exceeds GDDR VRAM in many ways. Despite this, HPM memory is nowhere to be found in modern gaming graphics cards. Why is this? Well, the short of it is that this memory simply isn't fit for gaming. Rather, it's best used in workstations that can make use of its incredible specs. We've made a whole video that deals with the differences between GDDR and HBM VRAM, so be sure to check it out if you're interested in learning more about this topic. But for now, all you need to know is that there is no reason whatsoever to get a graphics card with HBM VRAM if you're just interested in gaming. And that about does it for this video. In conclusion, GDDR memory is a type of VRAM that's found in most gaming graphics cards. At the moment, GDDR6 is the most prevalent type of GDDR memory and you'd have to go out of your way to either purchase a super high-end graphics card to get GDDR6X VRAM or a dated and likely used graphics card to get GDDR5 VRAM. For the most part, how much VRAM you have should reflect what resolution you plan to game in with 4GB being great for 1080p gaming, 6 to 8GB being good for 1440p gaming, and 8GB and beyond being necessary for 4K gaming. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. We upload a new video every week, so stay tuned for the next one. In the meantime, May your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.